in half. It's supposed to look like a like a cute little book. Okay, so Monday. Monday we did cute little notes on sample face. Tuesday you watched the video and hopefully did your cute little notes on fact, I mean on fact, or tree diagrams. And now today we're doing the main part of the book. If you really want to be cute and crafty, you can take the other two pages we've done throughout the week and stick them inside. How cute are you? I don't know. Okay, so we have a cute little thing going on with the counting principle, which is going to help us with the rest of chapter three in our textbook. And then, so you don't even read the board today. You're a little day behind, which is, I promise you'll get caught back up Monday because they were not that productive today. Um, so you're going to... We are going to fill in this book, and then you are going to do that worksheet that we passed out yesterday. The one that says A2 something, something, something. In fact, yeah. Okay. So, today we're going to talk about the counting principle. So, tree diagrams and sample space diagrams are great ways to find the number of outcomes possible, but they are, are they always useful? No. It takes too long to draw them out. What's something that reminds us of a sample space? We did lots of them last test. The sample space is where we have like all the options listed out with tree tables, and you have a point for that. So think tree tables. And so when we used to think about all the options, like heads, tails, we would consider like what if there were two heads? What if there was two tails? What if there was heads and a tails? So those kind of options are great, but not always that useful because they take too long. Okay, so think of a situation where a tree diagram or sample space diagram may be too large or difficult to create and describe that situation below. I knew you were going to say that. You have another point. And that's exactly what I'm going to say. That was my exact example I used. Multiple scoops of different flavors of ice cream. Okay, here is why you don't want to make a tree diagram if there are multiple scoops of different flavors. Because if you can do one chocolate, that's different from chocolate vanilla, which is technically different from vanilla chocolate, which is definitely different from vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. So you can see why with ice cream and mixing flavors and number of scoops, my gosh, listing out all the options would be a giant pain in the tail. So there has to be a better way, a faster way, which is what's going to break Lauren's heart, but it's going to be okay. Okay, if you've got that, then let's go inside to that better, faster way. Oh, I still got people riding. I'll give them a second. Strange at all that you all arrived back at once. They're all taking pictures. No, it's fine. Caitlin, the seat side is free today, right? I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. You can stay with us if you want. Okay. Okay. Okay, so inside flap, those of us need to catch back up on the earth because there's a worksheet due today, by the way. Tree diagrams and sample space diagrams are great ways to find the different number of outcomes possible, but the counting principle is a much simpler way to find the number of possible outcomes. Okay, so what is the counting principle? And you actually already used it when you finished your 3.1.1. So... In 3.1.1, you did S for scoops, 
So let's say you had S options to make one choice, S ways to make one choice, like scoops. And then you have F ways to make another choice. I need to stop writing in this purple. Oh, I do desperately. It's terrible. Green will do so much better. Can you get a little closer? Absolutely. Oh, goodness. I don't know why no one had asked before then. Am I already kind of point? S ways to make one choice, like scoops. F ways to make another choice, like flavors. And if you remember, if you wanted to put the both together, what did you decide it was? SF. SF. You did scoops times flavors. So you did S times F. So we're going to do. There are then. Miss Cotton. Yes, ma'am. Is Emily Mueller in there? No, ma'am. Thank you. Then there are S times F ways to make the two choices together. And so that's a really complicated way to explain. I mean, there are a lot of words, like a typical girl, a lot of words. Um, to explain that when we did scoops and flavors, when we went to figure out all the options, we just did scoops times flavors. So genuinely today, we're just going to be multiplying. Now, it's, it gets a little more deep than that in the textbook, and we'll handle that bad boy on Monday. But for today, especially with the worksheet we're about to work, literally we're just multiplying. So let's look at our first example. If you have four different pairs of socks and six different pairs of sneakers, how many different combinations of socks and shoes do you have? Because you literally need four times six. So let's see if I can put both on the screen at the same time. So four times six, you get 24 options. And I know this sounds really stupid. You're like, Miss Compton, why are we multiplying? Like, I know I took this Greek, but I didn't want to multiply. I swear... People forget that this works for a normal problem because we start doing permutations and combinations, which is where we start being selective, like four pairs of socks, but we can only choose out of three of them. Like we start getting picky. And people forget about easy stuff like just multiplying. It's amazing. Okay, number four, table, let's let table four handle it. What's the answer on number four? Going once, going twice, sold to Grant, Grant, mm -hmm. six times eight is 48, you can have a point, 48 different meals. Okay, number five, yes, Angela? Um, 26. No. Oh, no. Did you multiply the two numbers? Yeah. 13 times 2. It's not 2, it's 11. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although I understand. Yeah, you can you can have your point, Tangela, and we'll give Brittany a point too. 143 outfits. And last but not least, with the donut hole, the dough hut, donut shop. Now, that one required a little more because we have to do 2 times 5 times 4 and get 40 different no -nets. You can't see what I'm doing. Can, can I see number um, 4 again? Yes. Oh. Okay, so literally we're just multiplying. So if you have your worksheet from yesterday... Now we decided to skip then. We're not going to skip it now. It says A2 something something at it. Can I steal yours?
Okay, so this is what has to be done today. Now, if Mallory gets this done, and I get it Friday, but she's worried about her next week, so if she's trying to get ahead, she could start 3.1.2. That would not be a bad idea. But all Mallory absolutely has to get done today is this worksheet. And I'm going to tell her that it is okay. She needs to have all the right answers because this is really easy. So she better have all the right answers except all two of them. It's okay if she's kind of guessing because we didn't exactly go over this kind. Two and five. I'm going to... Two, five, and six. I'm going to forgive her. Two, five, six, seven, I'll lie. Two, five, six, seven, if she doesn't have a perfect answer, I might forgive her. But otherwise, Lord Jesus, she can multiply better than most. So if she doesn't have the right answer, she can see why I'm going to be mad at her paper. Are there any questions about this? Okay, then Miss Compton has said all the things that she needs to say. Brittany. I don't know what she's...